Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you. Hey, we're in the season of blessing. Praise God. I've been sharing with you on the one whom God wants to bless. And, and listen, he told me to share it with you because he really wants to bless you. So he sent me to prepare your heart for the blessing. And after the preparation, the blessing comes. Praise God. So today before going to the broadcast, hey, can we call for that daily bread? It's part of the blessing. So as we call, expect a miracle. I know the month is just two days to end. The month is going to end tomorrow. But hey, listen to me. The blessing of the Lord is coming upon you. Even as we ask for our daily bread right now. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Supply is hitting you right now. I'm telling you, the supply is coming today, today, today. Hallelujah. You know, you know, sometimes you find believers who are working. So they, 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 they do jobs. And for some reason, they can't think beyond their paycheck. Everything about their lives is around revolving around their paycheck. So when they want to even pray that God should bless them, they, they pray for either a better job or they pray for increments in, in, in their pay. Hey, yes, it's good to expect such. It's good to be rewarded where you put your energy and effort. But hey, beyond what you labor for, beyond your paycheck, God still takes responsibility for your life. That is what love is. Love is responsibility. Love see, and responsibility creates commitment. See? So, because God loves you, He is committed to you. You are His priority. You are. You are. See? That is what responsibility is. When He adopted you as His child, it meant he was taking full responsibility for your life. And it's still the same way it hasn't changed. He has taken responsibility for your life. And then he's committed to you. You see, that's why I speak to men. Listen, when you married that wife, that day you made a commitment before God and man. That this woman will become your responsibility. And you are going to be available for wisdom, for finances. Everything that concerns this woman has become your responsibility. And let me tell you this truth. Responsibility is of the heart. It's not according to your pockets. It's of your heart. Because sometimes you see, some men will say, oh, I wish I had enough money. I know what I would have done. No, sir. The money follows your heart. The money follows your heart. If you make up your mind, if you make up your mind, get out all the distractions around you. Get out the things that is distracting you from your wife and from your family. Let, your, let them be your focus. Listen to me. God made you to be responsible. And he's giving you that ability. And I'm telling you the truth. If you concentrate on God and the ability that he's giving to you, you will be amazed at the kind of beautiful things that will come out of you. You will be amazed at the kind of wisdom that will come out of you. But sometimes we just love to be distracted. Because we don't want to face our real focus. So we find things to distract us. And we feel we, we are just enjoying ourselves by that distraction. But let me tell you this too also. No matter how long you run away from your focus, you will still come back to it. Because that's what God has designed you for. So it's better to do it early 
than to start doing it when you are old. Some of you are playing with your wives right now. You think you're catching form. But I'll tell you this truth. The responsibility you're running away from today, you will still meet it in the future. So when Solomon says, hey, serve God in the days of your youth, that is the highest wisdom anyone can give to you as a young person. Why? Because what you start early, as you get older, you master. And by the time you master it, you are now cruising in it. Taking responsibility for your wife, taking responsibility for your family is a decision you make. And it's best you start making that decision early. You say, oh, if you know my wife, you will not say the things that you're saying. You married her. She's your responsibility. You see all those things you think is bad in her. God has given you the ability to solve it. The reason you've not solved it yet is because you're running away from it. If you will focus on your responsibility, the fact that your child is exhibiting a bad character, do you throw that child away? No, you say, where, should I, where will I throw him to? Now, because you just feel, eh, it's my wife, so you, you can't throw your wife away because God is still going to ask you. Your marriage was not by mistake. Your marriage was not by chance. It doesn't matter how you're trying to explain that right now. You hear me? You think God couldn't have stopped that marriage? You think he didn't know what to do to stop that marriage? Oh, he could have stopped it. If God didn't stop it, no matter how stubborn you are or you were, he knew how to stop it. If he didn't stop it, then he must have looked at it and seen that in some way, it will work out his righteousness. God sees all things. Never you imagine for once that God shut his eyes where you are concerned and just allowed you to do whatever you do. Even though you tell him, Lord, allow me, I want to do anything I like. Because he knows that he's responsible for you. He will only give you such allowance that the day you will cry out to him, he knows how to re rearrange things. He will never let you go so far. So hear me. Hear me. The wisdom of God is available for you. Only if you will stay focused. Stay focused on the job that God has given to you. Stay focused on your family. I'm telling you the truth. Just, just by, you know, just by looking after your family can generate so much faith to build you up to take a nation. When challenges come in your family, instead of running helter skelter, stop. I'm speaking to men right now. Why? Because you're the head. If the head is right, the whole family will go right. Don't complain about anybody. Fix it. You have the ability to fix it. Imagine us going to Jesus and Jesus is now taking us our complaint and going to complain to... Imagine Jesus going to someone and saying, Oh, if you know what this, this my son is doing to me, eh? Hi! Oh, I wish. No! He will fix it. Is there anything that he cannot fix? He said, that's Jesus, but he is in you. So your number one responsibility as a man is to make sure you're connected with Jesus. And the moment you're connected with Jesus... He will always tell you what to do. So you are laboring in your family. You are laboring over your wife. Have you asked Jesus yet? Lord, this is the challenge my wife is always giving me. Please tell me how to handle her. Tell me the words to say. Tell me the actions to take. Without you waking up and saying, I'm going to deal with you. And putting all the wrong ideas and wrong thoughts in your mind. Hear me, let me tell you this. If Jesus is not directing your life, trust me, Satan is. You are never without direction. I'm telling you the truth. You are never without direction. The question is always, who are you following? Because everywhere you turn, there is something you're looking at. See, that thing you're looking at is the direction you're following. 
So when a man wakes up and says, I know what to do to my wife. I'm going to beat her. I'm going to discipline her. You are seeing something. There is something you're looking at. That thing you're looking at is the direction you are following. And if it is not the Lord Jesus that is giving you that direction, then Satan is the one giving you that direction. And remember, Jesus said the thief doesn't come but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Waking up with thoughts to beat your wife, waking up with thoughts to, to deal with your wife is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus builds, Jesus gives lives. If he wants to, if he's the one directing you, your words will give life. Your actions will build. That's why he came. He's not going to watch your whole family destroyed. No. But you see, if you don't follow his directions, Satan will destroy your family. And that's what he's been trying to do. The Lord said, I should tell you this. He's been trying to destroy your family ever since. Why? Because the seed of God is in that family. He is afraid of what is coming out from that family. He is so afraid. So he wants to rubbish it right now. You don't understand this. You think marriage is just for both of you. No. God is watching out, your, watching out for your children. He's watching out for that seed that is coming out from you. They are going to fulfill the kingdom of God. They are going to fulfill the word of God. And Satan is after that. If you don't know this, know it now. So men, get your life together. It's time to be leaders. It's time to be good examples. It's time to get up and tell yourself, we can do it. I can do it. You watching me, I can do it. Make up your mind for it. Whatever it takes, I can do it. Whatever I take, yes, whatever it takes, I can do it. Why can I make bold to say that? Because Jesus is with me. And because he's with me, I can always ask him what to do. He will tell me what to do. The solution is just a wisdom away. And Jesus is that wisdom. And when he put the idea in your heart, oh, you will see how simple it is to be the head of your home. It will see how simple it is to be in charge, to be the role model of your children, to be the one your children will be proud of. You will not have children who, who will be proud of you as they are little. But when they begin to grow to know things, they'll begin to realize that, ah, that is not the hero that I thought he was. Only Jesus and you submitting to him can keep that constant thing in their minds. He wants to build you. He wants to show himself through you to your children. He wants to show his consistency in your life because of your children. When they see that their daddy can be consistent, then they can believe that God can be consistent. See that? So it's easy for our children to believe God because they see him in our lives. Wake up. That's the word of the Lord I'm speaking to you today. Wake up. It's time to take charge. It's time to take charge. Lead your family into righteousness. Lead them into righteousness with peace. And he is there to help you. He has never said you should go do it alone. He said, come, let us reason together. Whatever challenge you think there is, he's there to help you. He's there to give you counsel. He's there to advise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for you now. The Lord just ministered in my heart. I should minister to men right now. And I pray these words have penetrated your heart. So I pray for you that God will saturate your mind with his peace. Let the Lord saturate your mind with his peace. And by that peace, you shall arise and begin to take charge. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray the Spirit of God fill your heart with ideas. In Jesus' mighty name, receive peace right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now get ready. Tomorrow is the last day of the month. Hey, and we're going to be having our 24 hours prayer and fasting. Now, what we say 24 hours, we're going to be praying according to the watches. Now, this prayer meeting is via Zoom. 
Now the link is on your screen, but prepare for it. Tomorrow we are beginning tomorrow, midnight, that's midnight um, on Thursday, midnight Thursday, breaking into Friday, because Friday is the first of the month. I'll talk more on this tomorrow. God bless you. Have a great day. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.